place. Your time to play. It's fun. It's exciting. And you're winning and winning and winning. Your moment is now at Morongo Casino Resort and Spa. Morongo. Good times. Great moments. The NASCAR Xfinity Series is coming exclusively to the CW. Eight weeks of action, including every playoff race. This, this, this is when championships are won. The NASCAR Xfinity Series. The action begins Friday, September 20th at 4 on KTLA 5. Monday, join the frightful Halloween Disney fun with four one-day, one-park tickets at Disneyland Resort. Watch at 8 a.m. for the code word, Monday. Now on the KTLA Morning News at 9, a Georgia father and his son facing murder charges. Prosecutors say he gifted the teenager the gun that was used in this week's deadly school shooting. We'll have details from their court appearance coming up. A small plane drops from the sky and crashes near a hotel in Hawthorne. What we know about the two people on board that aircraft. And firefighters braving dangerously hot weather as they battle a brush fire threatening homes in the Inland Empire. Good Friday morning. I'm Kirk Hawkins filling in for Mark Kriske, a live look from downtown L.A. as another hot day is upon us across the Southland. Dangerous heat continuing through the weekend, especially today. 85 along the coast, 104 downtown L.A., 118 in the San Fernando Valley. We might even see 120 today in parts of the San Fernando Valley. Orange County, uh, look for a high of 103 degrees, 113 in the Inland Empire. and the high desert, uh, we're tracking a high of 108. Uh, well, much more on this heat wave coming up for now. Jessica, back to you. Kirk, thank you. Breaking news this morning, a 14-year-old Georgia boy accused of shooting and killing four people at his high school has made his first court appearance this morning. Colt Gray will be tried as an adult on four counts of murder. He sat next to his lawyer this morning during a brief hearing. The judge told him the charges he's facing and if he understood those charges. His lawyer declined to seek bail and the boy did not enter a plea. The judge told him he could face life in prison without parole. His father, 54-year-old Colin Gray, also appeared in that same courtroom a short time later. He was arrested yesterday and charged with four counts of second-degree murder, four counts of involuntary manslaughter, and eight counts of cruelty to children. He faces a maximum 180 years in prison if convicted on all counts. He did not enter a plea. Investigators say Colin Gray bought his son an AR-style rifle as a Christmas present. They say he knowingly allowed his son to have a weapon. Deputies say the boy shot and killed two students and two teachers at his school on Wednesday. Nine others were wounded. They are expected to make a full recovery. Breaking news this morning here at home. Two people have been critically injured after their small plane crash landed outside of a hotel in Hawthorne. The FAA is investigating that incident and Carlos Herrera live now at the scene with the latest for us. Good morning. Hi, good morning, Lou. We now have an update from the uh, NTSB. We now know uh, that that small single-engine plane crashed shortly after taking off from the nearby Hawthorne Municipal Airport. You can see what's left of it here uh, this morning. It's unclear what exactly happened, what led it to crash here in the middle of the street. Investigators have been on scene for about two hours. We're right near 126th Street and Hawthorne Boulevard, right near Hawthorne City Hall. Those two people on board the plane are still hospitalized and critically injured. Let's get you over to some dramatic images from the ground as many people were here uh, recording video on their cell phone as well. Authorities telling us it was about 12.40 a.m. when the single-engine Piper Comanche plane, for an unknown reason, came crashing down, catching fire on impact, narrowly missing buildings, cars, and other people on the ground. There were witnesses here in the area. They heard it, they were startled, and quickly jumped into action once they realized it was a burning plane. Somebody said, hey, man, somebody there burning because everything was on, everything was in flame. And I heard somebody mention that they saw somebody there. And once we, once I made out that there was somebody there, we ran over and tried to offer the man some aid. One guy was throwing some dirt on him to try to get him, get the fire subsided. 
Officials say this Good Samaritan's may have saved lives. The two people on board managed to get out. They suffered severe burns but were conscious and speaking when they were taken to the hospital. We spoke with aviation expert Robert Ditchie this morning. He says as bad as the crash was, it could have been much worse. I don't know why this particular aircraft crashed. It could be just pilot error. It could be running out of fuel, which is pilot error. It could be engine failure, which is not pilot error, but could be mechanic error. Uh, it could just simply be uh, landing short of, of the intended point of landing. There you see the aircraft. It says about four to six people made mostly out of metal is registered out of Culver City, but it's unclear, according to investigators, where it was headed. Uh, again, the crash, the cause of it, still under investigation. We'll send it back to you. Carlos, thank you. Wildfire is burning into the San Bernardino National Forest from the city of Highland. And evacuation warnings were posted as those flames moved towards homes at one point overnight. KTLA 5's Annie Rose Ramos in Highland with the latest on that firefight. Good morning. Ladies, good morning to you both. We've learned in the past hour that this fire has now burned through over four, 500 acres here in the San Bernardino County. This is what firefighters are up against, the terrain. It is so difficult. You can see that group of firefighters trying to get up this side of the mountain to get to the part of the area that is burning. Over to the right, Dave, I'm going to have you... Uh, focus in on that chopper that's now going in trying to get to the part that's burning as well by air. You can see more choppers in the air just coming behind it there ready to drop that fire retardant. As the sun comes up we've seen more action in the air but here on the ground coming back to this mountain over here it's taken this group of 50 firefighters the past 30 minutes just to get up this one hill. We can't see it from where we're standing but there are so many more hills and mountains that they have to get through in order to get to the area that's burning you might be able to make up make out some of the fl the smoke in the background that's where they got to get to they're carrying meal packs on the back of their um a back back of their backpacks they're carrying water they're carrying axes they've got a long day ahead of them it is in the morning and it is already incredibly hot now where i'm standing this is what has already burned before started this fire starting last night right ar uh, around 4 p.m you can see the firefighters here this is what they're doing. They're holding the line. They're going to stay here all day long because you can see, guys, across the street, that is where the communities begin. That's where the homes begin. They want to make sure that with the growing heat, with the wind, and with all this brush, most of it has burned through, but there's still a little bit more that hasn't burned. With all this brush, that a hot spot doesn't spark up again during the day, doesn't create another fire somewhere here, and jump the road and go to any of those homes. We spoke to the battalion chief here in the area just a couple of minutes ago. Take a listen to where she said they are this morning with this fire. Over the night, we did have an increase in fire acreage. We're guesstimating now about 505 acres. Wow. Um, it did make a run on some houses, so we put in our contingent lines, we put in several engines, and we're able to keep homes from being destroyed. The topography is not easy. Talk about that challenge as well. Absolutely. So that poses a challenge to our firefighters on the ground with access issues, fire roads, trying to get our resources where they need to be to get to the head of the fire to start putting in our containment lines. So yes, topography is awful. It's very steep, very deep. All right, back here live as far as those evacuation warnings in place. We're talking about a couple of hundred homes, a couple of thousand of people. We're going to be talking them later today. But as behind me, this on foot is going to be a challenge for fire firefighters to get up to the part that is burning in order to fight it. And that is going to be their day in this extremely hot heat. All right, I'll send it back to you guys in the studio. And she just mentioned extremely hot out there, and you've been yeah. saying it. Dana didn't believe you when you said San Fernando Valley 118. Wow. Yeah, she thought we had made a mistake. She did. And and she was wrong. <laughs> but no, um, Annie Rose Ramos talking about the fire danger, critical fire weather out there uh, today. In fact, a red flag warning now in effect. You've got the heat, you've got some gusty winds, the chance of showers and thunderstorms, and then even relative low humidity. It's all there uh, to cause potential problems and why fire 
firefighters are now on alert. Ventura County, though, 107, plenty of sunshine, triple digits through the weekend. We do have not only red flag warnings still in effect, but excessive heat warnings, even heat advisories. In the Santa Clarita Valley today, 114 degrees. Temperatures remain in the triple digits through Monday. We'll start to see temperatures cooling down as the patterns start to shift a bit. 104 expected as your high across the LA area for today.